Let's do the. <clears throat> this is just the last of the Pamber emails. Oh, she sent me something. Oh, my medical records. She said she contacted Judge Gray's office this morning regarding the Zoom appearance. He's denied this request. Please appear in person this afternoon for the stupid Nelson hearing. All right, back on the 5th. If you continue to ignore my calls, operate in bad faith, as well as continue to prove ineffective as counsel, I'm finally going to play it in writing with the Florida Bar. Treat be told I'm going to do so anyway. I told you time and time again that email rarely works, and I'm homeless, and live on the streets in a car, and I'm completely and permanently disabled as well. There are and have been numerous things I wanted to talk about, and you've spoken to me once in six months. This, this is a fact. You hung up on me, blocked on my numbers, even blocked me on social media from your professional business page. I ask you questions by email. You never answer them. Your behavior is atrocious and utterly negligent. You're in no way capable of defending me or anyone else in, in any capacity. You're honestly a danger to a person's life and liberty. And I cc'd um, the Attorney General, and it, you know, obviously that failed. Mailbox is full. Can't get all the Attorney General. And she says, uh, court doesn't have to appear. Any Zoom appearances via Zoom. All court hearings with this person. What? And all court hearings on in, on in person. She can't even spell. She can't write. She's got a brain injury. I have no doubt you will or already have written bark, a bark of the bar a complaint against me. As I am your eighth or ninth attorney. She doesn't even know what attorney she is. I am sure you have done the same to your prior counsels. So she's making a statement that she's sure that I've filed bar complaints against my prior counsel. And that, that's a prove it because that's false. She's the only one. My email is open to anything you would like to communicate with me. Doesn't mean you're going to get, you will not get a response. We are not speaking over the phone because of the fact that you committed a prior felony by recording me. And since I advised you that, I have received several abusive messages, which is another reason we're only communicating via email. I scheduled a Nelson hearing to give you an opportunity to request another attorney and also let the judge know all the issues that you had, have or had with me. The court took no action since you didn't appear. Yeah. The judge now has ordered your personal appearance at all future court dates and has stated I can't waive it anymore. If you do not appear... You'll be subject to contempt. I'll see you in the 18th for trial trial call. So she says the judge issued, issued an order. That's not a fact. Because I didn't show up at the Nelson hearing because I couldn't? And I didn't even ask for it? That that needs to be initiated by the client, not by the not by the counsel. Not by your corrupt counsel. No, I don't have to show up for that either. You know, once again, you've answered none of my questions or counseled me in any legal way. I think you're mentally unfit and are displaying magical thinking. My situation has not changed. Send me this latest order for a competency hearing. Let me know what you're doing to obtain the missing witnesses that were present or accounted for, that weren't present or accounted for the last two jury trials. You can't have a trial without witnesses. You have the right to face your accusers. The courts want me there. Submit a motion for travel expenses, lodging, and pet care. This has caused undue emotional distress and hardship on me and an unreasonable expectations for a homeless and totally disabled person. You should know what order has been entered regarding a competency evaluation. And none have been entered for my appearance either. The court I'm saying, the court has ordered your personal appearance on January 18th, but no one can make you appear. You'll have to appear vol voluntary. should be voluntarily. And I will not be submitting a motion for below, nor is it authorized. So, <clears throat> this competency hearing. Pursuant to Florida Statute 916, 916.12, a defendant is incompetent to proceed with the, floor, the meaning of this chapter if the defendant does not have Sufficient present ability to consult with his or her lawyer with a reasonable degree of rational understanding, or the defendant has no rational or factual understanding of the proceedings against him or her. Of course not. Because she's not answering my questions. She answers none. So you've retaliated against me for lodging a complaint with the Florida Bar and for lodging complaints about you operating on licensed business. You're not practicing medicine without a license. You even mentioned and complained about my First Amendment right to free speech and me speaking out about this, the state, publicly elected officials, etc. 
You refuse to answer any of my questions. I just asked you about the missing witnesses. You unfortunately are still representing me against my wishes. I do not wish to be present until trial by jury with all witnesses present, in this being the third one. I also demand a competent attorney. There's no legal basis for me to appear until such a time as you are representing me poorly and atrociously. Why would I or should I appear at a third calendar call? Nothing has happened before as witnesses are unaccounted for as the Pasco Sheriff perjured the police report. In light of new evidence that I am the only one with documented injuries from the night of my attack and false arrest, you continue to ignore these facts and the corrupt courts will as well. Fruit of the poisonous tree. Torts. And once again, that got, um, got kicked from my Florida legal. See, your parents is, you state the appearance is voluntary. It speak on behalf of and for the judge and claim that this will issue that he will issue a warrant for me if I am unable to attend the third calendar call. So it's not voluntary. It's very confusing and you still State you refuse to speak with me by phone despite my consistent request that you do in order to effectively counsel me. I invoked reasonable requests for ADA accommodations, especially in the areas of communication, which you and the courts continue to deny. This is a crime. Another kickback from uh, Florida Legal. <clears throat> Appear in person for January 18th hearing or judge will issue warrant. Appear in person January 18th hearing or judge will issue warrant. And she stopped signing it with her hand for pet law law. So you've answered none of my questions that I've asked. None. So I gave her a bullet point list. Have you found the missing witnesses? Will they be present for trial? Have you hired an investigator as you stated you would do in August? Will you be submitting a motion for costs related to their transportation and lodging as they are out of state? Although the deputies purged the report claiming they live at my address. I was constructively evicted from due to this and the no contact order you refused to address. Two. Have you reviewed, reviewed or even received any discovery? Three, have you requested additional discovery, such as notes in David, inner office memorandum, emails, radio communications, text messages, and all prior files, etc., from the Pasco Sheriff's Office related to me? I have evidence of prior false arrests and acquittal, as well as documentation of multiple physical injuries, including a head injury sustained by police brutality committed by PSO deputies. I've already, I've already filed this motion. Of over a year ago, and it went ignored for all those those things listed. There's I put no, two number fours in here, so there's actually one more question. Four, six deputies were on scene, and we only have body worn camera footage from two deputies. Where's the body worn camera footage from the four other deputies as well as their reports? We're missing like seventy five percent, eighty percent of the body worn camera footage. Have you reviewed the medical records from the jail that stated I was covered in bruises and human bite marks? If not, why not? And if so, why have you not filed a motion to dismiss as I am the only one with documented injuries? Have you requested my FBI file as PSO utilizes intelligence-led policing and reports to the Fusion Center? I was interviewed by Tampa Bay Times about my targeting and the reporter viewed my channel and contacted me due to the evidence of my consistent targeting. Six. Where is the signed affidavit by a judge certifying I'm indeed indigent despite having a trust fund and associated case against my trustee? The judge Gray refused to hear. The clan Mansfield recused himself over. And Kimberly Sharp Bird tossed out over the phone in 10 minutes. Even having presented over 55 pages of evidence, criminal complaints submitted to the Secretary of State and Department of Justice and having $500,000 attached to it. Have you requested the jackets of all six deputies involved for training, disciplinary action, and complaints? Have you requested information from PSR regarding my son's arrest and pretrial intervention from 2017 for his battery charge against me? Do you believe it's ethical to file a competency evaluation after six months of not communicating with me? And doing this after I've reported you for ineffective communications as well as ineffective counsel of the Florida Bar. So as having you as reporting you for representing yourself as a business despite not having a business license to do so. As it's been uh, administratively dissolved. Knowing that I'm not in the area and I'm fear for my life due to well documented and persistent and current targeting by the Pasco Sheriff's Office, as well as being homeless, are you planning on filing a motion for costs related to my travel, lodging, and pet care? So I may be present despite the danger I'm in that you ignore. Why do you continue to ignore my request for ADA accommodations related to communication, refuse to speak to me on the phone, yet cite Florida statute using it as a basis for reasoning for a competency evaluation related to? comprehension. No one can comprehend a trial and its proceedings with unfit counsel that refuses to communicate and continually acts in bad faith. You're also making medical determinations and assumptions in bad faith as well as practicing medicine without a license to do so. I'm 
fully and permanently disabled. I have a long-time doctor. I see regularly. It's not you. <clears throat> I've asked this case in trial to move to another court, and then Judge Gray recused himself, which he agreed to last November. Why has the venue not been changed, and why is he still presiding over this, these after these facts? He and other judges have consistently denied me justice, along with fair and equal access to the courts. Demand all proceedings be on record, and you will need to submit a motion for recording, as I know these courts operate outside of law and constitution, and no records are made or kept. This is a fact. It's absolutely a fact. I need and demand answers to these questions, as I've had them for almost two years now, and I've asked these same questions of you for six months now, and you've withheld answers and continue to do so. I've had to ask these questions to eight separate attorneys that claim ethical conflicts, yet never list them in the aggregate as required by Florida law. That's in my uh, motion to dismiss, my demand to dismiss. It's never-ending undue delay to a trial, which I was denied due process in a speedy trial. I've been denied due process in a speedy trial. There's no doubt about it. My rights have been trampled by all of all once again. 14. How does the... This should be 15. How does the viral video containing body-worn camera evidence with almost 200,000 views affect jury selection bias in the trial itself? I've asked you to review the thousands of comments that they would be beneficial in forming a defense, which I don't believe you're capable of doing in any capacity anyway. 15 or 16. You've been arrested, charged, and convicted. I don't think she's been convicted yet. Of two felony counts of child neglect. How are you allowed to practice law or represent me? Why would the court Judge Gray specifically appoint a convicted felon such as yourself to represent me? Or even an accused felon? Give me a felony lawyer? You can explain to the court you can explain to the court all the issues you have with me on the 18th and request another lawyer since you didn't show up on that January 5th when I originally scheduled the opportunity for you. So she didn't answer. She just blew off all those she didn't answer a single question. Nothing. Just asked you 15 questions, which is basically 16, directly related to my case and trial that I've been asking since August, and you willfully ignore all of them. Let me know when the actual trials, and I'll be sure to inform the jury as I've already informed the Bar Association of your reckless behavior. Just answers, no questions. And she's going to, in retaliation, file that, that motion for a competency hearing saying I have no, um, you know, no understanding of the trial. Right. She didn't answer anything, not a single one. And that's the end of the email thread. And there's there's more prior to this. She's never answered a question. And it shows right here. My list of questions ends. She don't do she writes one paragraph. One paragraph. That answers none of these questions. That this woman needs to be disbarred. I will see it that she's disbarred. I will see to it. Unbelievable. 